Welcome to Independent VFX. In this tutorial, we'll look at creating a star-shaped muzzle flash quickly and easily right inside Adobe After Effects. Now, in the past, we've created muzzle flash using the fractal noise effect, but in this tutorial, we'll create our muzzle flash using white solids, masks, distortion layers, and the glow effect. Let's get started. Right, so I've started a new comp inside After Effects, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by adding a black solid as my base layer. So right at the bottom, a black solid. Then on top of that, I'm gonna add a white solid. And this white solid is gonna be the layer that we mask and shape and to be our muzzle flash. So let's go ahead and start. Uh, come up here to the mask tool, mouse over it, and grab the star tool. So I'm going to start by just drawing a star shape, say about that size. I'll grab my pointer and I'm just going to move that into the center of my comp. With that selected, come up here to the pen tool options and grab this convert vertex tool. And what you're going to do is you're going to just click on these points and you're going to convert them to nice round bezier points. Back to our arrow tool and then you're going to grab these points here on the star and you're just going to pull them into the middle a little bit. Try and keep it fairly concentric or symmetrical. But you want to create a shape that looks something like that. Then to this we are going to apply Effect Blur, Fast Blur, and just give it about a 10 or 15 pixel blur. I'm going to deactivate my mask shape just for now so we can see what's going on. Now to this I will apply Effect Blur Radial Blur. Over here in your Effects Palette, change the type to Zoom. And the center point for your Zoom should roughly be in the center of the shape we've just created because we put that shape in the middle of our comp. At this point, if it's not directly in the middle, we can come and just reposition it ever so slightly. Um, you're going to want to turn this radial blur up to around anywhere between 30 and 50, I suppose. So I'm just going to try a value like 35. And what that's going to give you is kind of this blasting out effect on your edges over here. And then here comes the magic part. We are now going to add effect, distort, turbulent displace. And we're going to add two instances of this. I'm going to hide my masks again. So the first instance of Turbulent Displace is to try and break up the edges of our shape. At the moment the scale is all wrong, so I'm going to come over here to the Effects Palette and I'm going to turn my amount up to around 90. And I'm just going to sort of interactively scrub my size down and you can start seeing what's happening. So I'm going to want that to be probably around there somewhere, probably in the 20s. And looking at this now my amount is a bit heavy. We want just enough here to break up the edges and the shape of this. So that's our first instance of Turbulent Displace. And I'm going to go ahead and add another one, Effect, Distort, Turbulent Displace. And now this one we want the size to be way, way smaller. So I'm just going to pull that right down, probably around there somewhere, 7 or 8. And I might push the amount up a bit just to get a bit more action out of it. There we go. So happy with that. We're starting to move towards what you can see is a nice star-shaped muzzle flash. Right, so the next step is to start coloring this and adding a glow. And I'm going to do that with an adjustment layer on top of everything. Before I create that adjustment layer, let me just name my layers for clarity. So this bottom layer I'm going to call black background. And this white solid I'm going to call star flash onto that adjustment layer. Layer, new, adjustment layer. And to this, I'm going to apply the CC toner effect so that I can start turning these shades of gray on the edges into colors. So if I come to my effects and presets palette and I type in toner, there it is, CC toner. Drag that, drop that onto your adjustment layer. And what you want to do is you want to set your highlights to be just an off-white pale yellow. Probably somewhere there. And your mids, you want to be a nice fiery orange. Probably somewhere in that spectrum. 
and now let's add our glow effect so you could either go effect stylize glow up there or you could search for it in these effects and presets so i'll just type in glow here it is towards the bottom effect stylize glow i'll drop that on and by default it's a bit too heavy so the first thing you want to do is instead of using original colors tell it you want to use a and b colors and then specify your a and b colors down here i'll tell it that color a should be a nice bright yellow and color b should be i guess a fiery orange red then we want to take our glow threshold up so that only the really bright parts of this flare are affecting our glow so we probably want to be somewhere around 80 percent and we want to turn our glow radius right up there we go so that our glow is creating a nice flare around our muzzle flash and lastly our intensity might just be a touch high if a gun if an m4 style weapon was firing directly at you it might look something like that um, but we want to just go and take this to the next level so um, now that we've got our color layer set up let's just label it so i'm going to call this glow effect and we can always switch that back on whenever we want to so i'm going to switch it off for now just to make life a bit faster so coming back to our star flash what i want to do is i actually want to get rid of this solid section in the middle just to help us with a bit of realism so i'm going to grab an elliptical mask and i'm just going to roughly draw around the center of this flare and i'm going to set that mask to subtract and I'm going to up its feather amount a little bit. And looking at this now, I think our star shape needs to be altered ever so slightly. So I'm just going to go ahead and pull. Whoops, undo that. I'm going to just shift click these points. And I'm going to just pull them in even closer to the center to just get a bit more taper on these, these little flary bits that would be coming out of the muzzle port or the flash hider, the, muzzle, the little ports on the flash hider on the end of the gun. Um, just to put things in perspective, let's switch our glow effect back on. And I'm gonna take this muzzle flash and I am gonna drop it onto a background image. This has already got animating shells and flashes added to it. Set to add. Let's just kind of move it into position around there. So already you're starting to get the idea. What I would need to do here, I think, is because our shooter is kind of at a three-quarter angle and this muzzle flash was created head-on, I will just squish it in the x-axis a little bit. Right, let's get back to our muzzle flash. So that's kind of giving us an idea of where we're at. I'll just size that up ever so slightly. There we go. Back to our muzzle flash. Um, I'm going to switch off our glow effect again just to make things faster. And looking at this, I think the center circle could contract in a bit. So I'm just going to play with mask expansion to pull that in ever so slightly. What I want to do next is I want to set up these turbulent displace effects so that they randomize every frame. Um, so that if I want to repeat this muzzle flash again and again for automatic fire, uh, it looks slightly different on every frame. So if I go ahead and open the effects channels here for turbulent displace and I drop them down, under evolution options is an option called random seed. Let me hide these masks again. Now you'll see if I start to cycle random seed here, I get these kind of random shape changes to the muzzle flash. I'll just set that back to zero. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a basic wiggle expression to drive that random seed. So I'm going to alt click that stopwatch and I'm going to type wiggle bracket 25 which means 25 times a second if you were working at 30 frames a second in your project you would want that value to be 30 so wiggle 25 comma let's say a value of 100 and i'll close my brackets and click off if i ram preview that let's see what we're getting great and just to save some time, we will click on that expression, copy it, and I will open up my second instance of Turbulent Displace, open up those evolution options. 
alt click the random seed stopwatch and I will paste that same expression into my second instance of turbulent displace. And if I ram preview that, great, you can see we're getting nice random movement on each frame of that muzzle flash. Let's go ahead and create the next component of our muzzle flash shape. So seeing as though we've already set up all of this, let's go ahead and duplicate the star flash layer. Let's hide the first version of it and rename this new version. Let's call it main flash. Now let's quickly open up these masks and delete them because we're going to create our own new shape on this layer. So grab your pen tool, start from the center of your comp and you know the shape of this thing is really up to you. I'm going to create a shape that I like to use for muzzle flash which looks something like this. But again, I guess different weapons make slightly different shapes and there's always a fair degree of randomness to these. But hmm, something like this, I might just come and alter this a little bit, give it a bit more, bit more variation. Whoops. Something like that, I suppose. And then let's just switch on our star flash so we start getting a sense of scale. So you see what we're getting here. Might, the, the whole thing might need to be a little bit bigger. Something like that. Right, now looking at this main flash, I think we need to break up the shape a little more. So if we go to our first instance of turbulent displace, and we turn up the amount, and we turn up the size ever so, ooh, no, the size was actually pretty good. Um, I'll switch on my glow effect again, and you can see what we're getting. And let me just do a RAM preview of this. So there we go, we're getting this nice, muzzle flash shaped thing that is random on every frame more or less. Now let's go back to our comp with the shooter and the muzzle flash comped in. Um, looking at this again because we're dealing with kind of a three quarter angle maybe this main flash we can just scale down in the x axis a little bit like that. And probably rotate it a little bit. And let's just move this into position there. All we need to do now really in our shooter comp is keyframe the opacity of this muzzle flash. So first frame we'll make it 100%, next frame I'll make it 0, and the next frame also 0, and then the next frame it would be 100. So I'm going to copy paste these three keyframes over and over again, just to give me automatic fire. Right, let's do a RAM preview of that. and you can see what you're getting. Now looking at that on the move, I think this main flash needs to be a little bit bigger. Let's take another look. There we go. That's more like it. So there you can see we've got a, a great base for a really nice looking muzzle flash. And what you might want to do as the final step is come in here and make some kind of a random edit. What you find is these muzzle flashes in film tend to be quite random and you don't always get a perfect muzzle flash on every frame. So what you might want to do is come in here, use masks to actually edit your muzzle flash um, frame by frame and I'll show you what I mean. Let's open up our star and this mask that's sort of um, eating away the middle of this flash, let's just expand it right up. Then our main flash, let's go ahead and grab a circular mask, quite a big one, and let's just carve a big chunk out of the back of it here. And let's turn up the feather amount for that mask. So this is kind of as if you're getting the last remnant of a flash. And you know, looking there in the shooter comp, you see what you get. So very nice every now and then to just mix in one of these random flashes where a flash is half cut off or not fully developed. Um, and kind of intersperse that with your regular flash. So thanks for watching our tutorial on star-shaped muzzle flash for your M4 and AR-15 style weapons. 
Um, I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Please stay tuned, there'll be many more. Thanks for watching. I'm Scott Newman. Cheers.